بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس دس از یور انسٹرکٹر انیسا نواز فرام ڈپارٹمنٹ آف فزکس دس از آر تھرڈ لیکچر آف چیپٹر نمبر ون میجرمنٹس ان دا پریویس لیکچرز وی ہیو ڈسکسڈ اباؤٹ امپارٹنس آف فزکس اینڈ میجرمنٹس فزیکل کوانٹیٹیز انٹرنیشنل سسٹم آف یونٹس سائنٹیفک نوٹیشن اینڈ کنوینشنس آف رائٹنگ یونٹس In this lecture, we will discuss in detail about errors and uncertainties, different types of errors and a rounding of the numbers. Okay, so as we know that all measurements are uncertain to some extent due to different reasons. So errors may occur due to negligence or inexperience of a person by using a faulty apparatus or inappropriate method or technique. The sudden environmental changes or any other unexpected laboratory mishap may also be the cause of error in a measurement. How we are going to define an error? It is basically the difference between measured value and actual value that is known as error. The difference between measured value. What is measured value? The value which is calculated in laboratory. and actual value which is true or accepted value so difference between the two is giving us the error or we can say error refers to the disagreement between a measurement and the true or accepted value again the same thing difference between a measurement and the true or accepted value let's consider an example As we know that actual value of g acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meter per second square. We are doing a calculation in the laboratory and measured value of g will be 10.4 meter per second square. Obviously there is some difference between the two values. So we are having some error. That error may be calculated as measured value minus actual value. After putting the values, we will get 10.4 meter per second square minus 9.8 meter per second square. That will give you 0.6 meter per second square. So this difference 0.6 meter per second square is the error in the calculations. Difference between measured value and actual value. What about uncertainty? Uncertainty as used here means the range of possible values in any measurement within which the true value of the measurement lies. It is not a single value rather it is the range of possible values an interval in any measurement within which the true value of the measurement lies. And how we are going to write the uncertainty? The format of writing uncertainty is value plus or minus uncertainty. Okay, let's consider an example. We know that actual value of g is 9.8 meter per second square. If we are doing some calculation in laboratory and the calculated values are g is equal to 9.7 meter per second square, which is having a difference of 0.1 meter per second square with actual value, 9.9 meter per second square, 0.1 meter second per second square more than the actual value, 10 meter per second square, 0.2 meter per second square more than the actual value 9.6 meter per second square that is again 0.2 meter per second square less than the actual value and 9.8 meter per second square which is exactly equal to the actual value so over here we have checked this out that all these values are no more than 0.2 meter per second square than the actual value or no less than the 0.2 meter per second square than the actual value so we can make an interval or we can say that it is either having interval g is equal to 9.8 plus minus 0.2 meter per second square so this plus minus 0.2 meter per second square is explaining about the uncertainty that It doesn't matter how many calculations we are doing, how many measurements we are doing, all those measurements must lie within this interval of 9.8 minus 0.2 meter per second square which is the least value which is the minimum value or 9.8 plus 0.2 meter per second square which is the maximum value of the calculation. 
so over here uncertainty that is interval within which all the measurements are lying so we can say uncertainty of a measured value is an interval around that value such that any repetition of the measurement will produce a new result that lies within this interval it means that all the calculation all the values must lie within that interval it doesn't matter how many calculations we are doing like we have considered in the example of g is equal to 9.8 plus minus 0.2 meter per second square all the values were lying within this interval and one important thing is that the skill comes in getting the confidence intervals or the uncertainty to be as small as possible. What does it mean? It means that we can make a calculation certain. How? Like if we are going to calculate the length of a table, let's say it is 100 centimeter. We can say if any scientist is measuring that length, he will say that it is 100 centimeter plus minus two centimeters okay so it is having an uncertainty plus minus two centimeter we can say that the length of table is between zero meters and hundred meters so that is a certain sentence but that is useless so the uncertainty interval should be as small as possible what about types of errors we are having three different types of errors personal error systematic error and random error what about personal error it is defined as the error due to carelessness or improper knowledge about an instrument or incorrect reading of a scale by an experimenter this is called personal error this error is due to some person some experimenter who is performing the experiment okay for example if you say that we are reading a scale but we are reading it like this we are not reading the scale in the horizontal position so we will get results will always be higher than they should be we are always getting wrong result but these are not due to the instrument or some other thing that is due to the way of calculating so what we have to do we can remove the personal error some ways of removing the personal error eradication of personal error may be if the experimenter takes care during the measurement of any quantity then personal error can be removed if the experimenter has proper knowledge about the measuring instrument he is using the instrument correctly then personal error can be removed or if the experimenter is following the proper technique of measurement like you can see over here Technique number one that is incorrect. Technique number three is again incorrect, but technique number two is correct. By using this technique, we will get the exact result. So personal error can be removed by taking care of these things. Second type of error is systematic error. The error due to faulty operators and poor calibration of the instrument itself is called systematic error it is due to the apparatus so it doesn't matter how many times you are making the calculation all the times they will give you wrong reading the error also arises due to zero error between the scales what is zero error the error which is provided by the instrument which is produced by the instrument that it should be giving zero reading but it is not giving you the zero reading even it should be okay so that is zero error and scales are not coinciding at the zero as in vernier calipers screw gauge or spherometer so how we are going to remove the systematic error error due to apparatus error due to poor calibration of the instrument by comparing the faulty instrument with some accurate and standard instrument if you are having some accurate and standard instrument we can make measurements with that instrument and we can again make measurements with the faulty instrument and we can compare the two readings the difference of the two can be added or subtracted from the measurements if you are having a faulty instrument and we are having an accurate instrument we will be having some different reading those readings can be added or subtracted how if we are having 
error which is positive if the error is positive means the value is more than the actual value then it will be subtracted from the faulty instrument reading for correctness but if the error is negative that is the value is less than actual value then it will be added to the faulty instrument reading to correct the measurement so systematic error may be corrected by adding or subtracting the value okay third type of error is random error which is also known as statistical or accidental error okay the error is defined as the error due to repeated measurements of same quantity under same condition that results in different values of the same quantity is called a random error it means that we are making calculations again and again by using same instrument and using same technique but, but all the times we are getting the different result that is known as a random error and the reasons of random error may be change in temperature voltage humidity height or there may be any other unknown cause which is causing this random error we don't know what is the reason behind this random error but we can minimize this random error by use maintaining strict control conditions in laboratory means temperature should remain constant voltage should remain constant all these things should remain constant repeating the measurement several times doing the calculations again and again and taking the mean of all the measurements we can minimize this error by using these techniques so we can say that the error arising due to natural imperfections of an experimenter which is personal error limitations of apparatus which is systematic error and sudden change in the environment which is random error is known as uncertainty so all these errors are causing uncertainty in the measurements okay so next we will discuss that how we are going to round off the numbers in measurements the quantities are always rounded off to certain level of accuracy okay so how we are going to define rounding off the numbers basically rounding means making a number simpler but keeping its value close to what it was making a number simpler but keeping its value close to what it was the result is less accurate but easier to use okay so in measurements quantities are always rounded off to certain level of accuracy or significant figures we have to round off the values to make the calculations simpler sometimes we can increase or decrease the retained digit while rounding off by following some rules we have to follow definite rules for the rounding off first rule may be if the dropping digit is less than 5 then last retained digit is kept as it is it means that if we have to round off let's say we are having some value 39.32403111 up to second decimal place second decimal place two digits after the decimal then by dropping four we have to drop all the digits after second decimal place where four is at third decimal place the correct answer will be 39.32 we are going to drop four and we will get 39.32 what we are doing over here we are dropping 4 which is less than 5 and the retained digit will remain as it is which is 2 second rule is if the dropping digit is greater than 5 then 1 is added to the last retained digit what does it mean that if we have to round off the same number 39.32 80311 we have to round it off up to second decimal place means two digits should remain after the decimal then by dropping eight third digit after the decimal that will be dropped as it is greater than 5 at third place after decimal the correct answer will be 39.33 eight is greater than 5 so we will add one to the last retained digit which is 2 in this case 
so rounded off value will become 39.33 we are dropping 8 and we are adding 1 to this last retained digit so answer will become 39.33 general rules of rounding maybe it can be explained as find the number the retained number look right next door five or more raise the score four or less let it rest normally you consider these rules that if we are having the number which is to be dropped five or more raise the score make it plus one four or less let it rest make it as it is but over here we are having this 5 which will be rounded off with some different rules how we are going to check that out that if the dropping digit is 5 the digit which we have to drop is 5 then we may be having two conditions no non zero digit after dropping 5 the 5 which we are dropping we are having no non zero digit after that or we are having some non zero digit after 5 two conditions may arise if you are having no non zero digit after dropping 5 then we may be having last retained digit is even or last retained digit is odd we have to check for these two possibilities okay so what is happening over here last retained digit is either even or it is odd if last retained digit is even and we are dropping a 5 and there is no non zero digit after that 5 then what will happen we will keep last retained digit as it is and if last retained digit is odd then we will add 1 to the last retained digit okay and if you are talking about second condition that there is no non zero digit uh, if you are having some non zero digit after 5 then what will happen one is added to the last retained digit whether it is even or odd okay that will be clear to you people by considering some example if you have a value 12.3145 check that out we have to round it off up to third decimal place third decimal place is this four so it means that we will retain three digits after the decimal and condition over here you can check this out that there is no non zero digit after dropping 5 we are going to drop this 5 and there is no non zero digit after this 5 and last retained digit is even we can consider some cases over here second case is we are having a number 3.233500 you can see over here last retained digit is odd and there is no non zero digit after dropping 5 another case over here we are having a number 2.634501 dropping number is even and there is some non zero digit after 5 so if there is some non zero digit after 5 then it doesn't matter that retained digit is even either or uh, even or odd another number 4.433567 you can see over here we have to drop 5 3 is the last retained digit and we are having some non zero digit after dropping 5 so over here what will happen no non zero digit after dropping 5 so we will see last retained digit is even or odd if it is even it will remain as it is so its result will be 12.314 4 will remain as it is over here you can see that there is no non zero digit after dropping 5 and last retained digit is odd so 1 will be added to this last retained digit and it will become 3.234 over here we are having some non zero digit after dropping 5 so obviously 1 will be added over here that will give us 2.635 and same is the case over here we are having some non zero digit after dropping 5 so 1 will be added in this 3 and we will get 4.434 okay so we are having some questions over here round off up to second decimal please we are having these questions we have to round off up to second decimal place means we will only keep two digits after the decimal 
for all these values we have to keep two digits after the decimal and keep this in mind that zero is considered as even while rounding off zero is considered as an even number okay girls now take a pause over here solve these values round off up to second decimal place and then proceed to the lecture then check out the correct answers okay so over here if you have done those calculations you can check it out we were having first value 39.3356 it is rounded off up to second decimal place as 39.34 what is the reason because dropping digit is 5 and there is some non zero digit after that 5 so 1 is added over here 39.34 second was 36.305 dropping value was 5 and last retained digit was 0 that is even no non zero digit over here even number is here so it will remain as it is 36.30 third was 90.6450 dropping digit is 5 no non zero digit after this 5 and over here we are having an even number so we will get 90.64 1.325900 again dropping digit is 5 and we are having some non zero digit after this 5 so 1 will be added to this last retained digit 1.33 is the answer 2.93600 dropping digit is 6 which is greater than 5 so obviously we will add 1 to the last retained digit that will give you 2.94 3.24312 dropping digit is 3 which is less than 5 so last retained digit will remain as it is 3.24 is the result okay girls i would like to end my lecture with this quote of stephen hawking look up at stars and not down at your feet try to make sense of what you see and wonder about what makes the universe exist be curious so think about all the things which are happening around you people be curious and you will get the results thank you so much that was all for today's lecture